kids thinking, but I can get going here. What do you got, sister? Well, of course, mainly I want to say the travels for my family going down to South Carolina. But when Bo was moving, he was doing some moving for him maybe last week, and somebody stole his wallet. Oh, no. That's hard with your credit cards and ID. And, yeah. License. That's a mess. Yeah. Well, I do too. Who else might have a prayer request tonight? Uh, praise that uh, the person that he uh, uh, played through the roller coaster with saw the crack. The, uh, yeah. Yeah, did you guys see the video? When the when it went around the corner, the whole top of the pier, the weld cracked. Uh -huh. And the track was not attached to the post. Oh, oh my gosh. So when the roller coaster went around the corner, the whole piece, the weld broke. And the whole track was moving back and did forth. No, somebody saw it move and they shut the ride down before anybody got hurt. But it was only a matter of time before that would have let go. Yeah. Yep. So. Uh, right on the line between South Carolina and North Carolina. Yeah. Yeah. Half the ride in South, half the ride in North. Yeah, it's like one of the gi It's part of the gimmick that you go over the state line. Yeah. But, yeah. A um, couple from this morning I want to share. Of course, we are praying for Miss Carol and her recovery. It's good to have you back with us. And we pray that you uh, don't do anything, which I know is near impossible for you. Hello, ladies. Glad you could join us. Um, let's see. Who else are we praying for? Um, we are going to keep praying for Cheryl Regner. They uh, removed the drains from her ports this week. She had uh, two different spots on her spine where they had drains put in from the surgery. So the drains are out, and we are praying for clean healing and proper healing of those incisions. Um, you know, she has diabetes, so there's, there's always a little bit of worry about wounds not healing correctly. So please pray for that. Um, Diane asked us to please keep praying. Her co-worker's daughter, Carly, she's the one we prayed for that had the two ligaments and the meniscus torn in her knee. She had to go to the ER this weekend. She had a pulmonary embolism. She had a blood clot from her leg that broke loose and went to her lung. So thank God they caught it, because um, that can be fatal. Uh, we are. We just. I just turned it on. Yeah. An emergency unspoken. Okay. All right. Thank you for sharing. Um. Let's see, a couple others just for church family, make sure everybody knows to pray. Um, we are still keeping Janet in our prayers as she is healing from her surgery on her arm. She's doing physical therapy. She's still not allowed to drive, so we're praying for her recovery. Um, Gina, is it okay to mention your friend, or do we want to just say unspoken? Okay. So... Uh, Gina's friend's husband was diagnosed with cancer, stage four cancer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we are keeping them in our prayers, the, the physical for him, but also them as a couple dealing with the strain of this. Yeah. So thank you. Tom Bell. Okay. Yes. And he has lymphoma, right? Leukemia. Leukemia. All right. Um, please keep praying for Rich. Um, he's been having some dental trouble, and it's causing severe pain in his jaw. And they're trying to figure out what they need to do to help him. Um, it's, it's probably going to involve surgery. 
So please pray for Rich. He's in a lot of pain. You know how that can be with a, a toothache and, and bone pain. There's not a lot that'll touch it. And um, we had a praise for Alazar's basketball camp the night that Pastor Tom shared his testimony and shared the story about Alazar. Um, there were 62 kids present, and 52 came to the altar and gave their lives wow. to Jesus. Amen. 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 Yeah. Amen. So I know they had some others throughout the week, so the, the grand total's higher than that. But just that one night, 50 kids came to the altar. Wow. Amen. Yeah. So that is amazing. Um, who else might have a prayer request? Victims in Baltimore. Did you hear about the No, it just happened today? Yeah. It happened yesterday. There's a nightclub. I haven't been on the news. Two deaths. Three serious. A lot of injuries. Twenty eight injuries. Two deaths, twenty eight injuries. It was a black party, and it occurred at 1230 at night. Where? Baltimore. Interesting. No, I, I tend to... When I get earnest into my sermon prep, I unplug from news because I find it mm-hmm. hard to focus. It's hard to listen to the spirit when you got all that stuff shooting through your head. So, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, who else might have a prayer request? All right. Oh, yes. Uh, my neighbor has the same problem. Yeah? The heart procedure. So just to make sure we're all straight, this um, Barbara's neighbor needs um, a, a transplant and also had a blockage in one of the blood vessels to his heart. And so they had to clear the blockage and get that flowing before they can approve him for the transplant service, right? So they didn't have any business? No, he had a blockage that had to be opened up. Yeah. So. Sounds like basketball's going well. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Barbara. Did you have anything else you'd like to share? Yeah. Yeah, I'm getting emails from my doctor, too. Um, my, our insurance change is over next month with Jill's job change, so I'm trying to drag my feet till the new insurance kicks in. Well, thank you for sharing. Will anybody else have anything you'd like to lift up? Please, sister. I have a praise report. Amen. I want to just keep the millennials uplifted in prayer <laughs> with these iPhones. They distract these cell phones is a distraction from God. But mm-hmm. I'm grateful for the wisdom that God gives us because my oldest twin called me today. Mommy, daddy, my car is leaking. Right away, I went into mommy mode. I said, hold on, calm down. I said, are you pumping the air? Yes, it's hot. I said, I'm just getting the information. I said, that's condensation. Yeah, it's okay. The air conditioner. But praise be to God. I just, you know, I'm just saluting all mothers, all fathers, family. Have, when it comes to our kids, I don't think I would have got that question right if it was on the test, but because it wasn't my daughter, I would, I'm like, oh, hold on. So I just want to share yeah. that I'm grateful. Mm-hmm. And I pray for all these millennials and everybody because mm. do you got a $900 iPhone and you caught? But it's okay. I answered the question. I got it right. I was able to calm down. I'm grateful to be in the house of God one more time. I'm grateful that Sister Carol is here, that I met y'all. I'm just, my spirit is high today because I answered that question. I said, God, thank you Amen. for Proverbs. I'm not a mechanic, but I got that one right. <laughs> oh, honey, you praise be to God. That's my 
I'm glad the spirit was with you, sister. Amen. Uh, I don't know who was first. <laughs> Tim? Okay. I've got a procedure coming up on you with my urologist. Okay. for free, but now she's retiring, and I'm concerned that the new doctor won't be as generous. So I hope, I'm hoping that we'll have the same relationship that I can get the free medication, because I certainly can't pay $2,000 for 90 days. It's called a tier one. Yeah. Oh, tier four, excuse yeah. me. Tier four of medication. in God's hands. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? We had some new visitors today, so please lift, uh, lift them up in your prayers. Um, we have a couple here who are from Haiti. They've been here a few times. They got to join us again today. And uh, Tito's sister and her kids were here again today, and we got to sing happy birthday to him. So it was good to have a bunch of little kids again on Sunday morning. We need Sunday school. We are, hey, we need Sunday school teachers. Wow. Yeah. So please pray. That's kind of where I was headed. So we've kind of had a plan ready to roll for when this day came. And part of it is to, to roll out children's church so that we can have something during the worship service so that kids can um, have something to go, you know, once worship is done. So... One of our worship leaders is ready to help head that up. Um, and since we have four people in the worship team, that gives us some wiggle room, which is good. Um, but we're also going to need some helpers to go along with that. So I'm just asking everybody to pray and, and see if that's something that you might be willing to do. Our hope would be if we could get four helpers, each person could just do one Sunday a month. And so that way you'd only miss one Sunday of church each month. And, of course, you can watch it on YouTube later, because I know you don't want to miss the sermon. So, but if you could pray about that. I do have a question about the, when you were mentioning about the, the live thing. Can you hear the difference then? Yeah, so if you go back and watch the one that comes up on YouTube, it'll, it'll be better. We've been having significant issues with Facebook, so we pay for a streaming license. Um, and you'll see, if you ever see license, it says license number in the description, that's what that's there for. And we basically, when it goes live, they'll strip the audio, they give us a warning, we tell them we have rights to it, and then they'll put the audio back. Mm -hmm. But it, it takes time for them to approve that claim, and it usually takes a few days. So when it comes to the live, it strips the, mu it strips the sound out because of the, the sound in the background there. Even though it's a two-hour live, even though we have the license to play it. Um, we're not the only church that's having this problem. Part of the issue is, and this is what we're looking at for a, a change, as we're changing the website, we're looking to change streaming too. When you, if you stream through YouTube, you can have it monetized or not monetized. And so if it's not monetized, there's no commercials. If you stream through Facebook, they always put ads on no matter what on their end. And our streaming license does not allow us to make money off of it. The, the streaming license we use allows us to play it in the church and stream it online as long as we are not making money off of it. But if Facebook throws an ad in it, then they have to pull the audio. They can't have the ad and the song in at the same time, and they want to get their penny. So they keep their ad on, and they strip our song off. And they pretend it's an issue with the computer, and then they fix it in a few days. But really what happens is, I know, hey, yeah, Mark Zuckerberg, fix it. But what happens is 
by the time they fix it three or four days later, it's a bunch of posts down in our Facebook feed and nobody gets it. So the workaround we've been doing right now is um, we're recording a clean copy of the service on the computer and that's what gets posted to YouTube in the, on Sunday afternoon. So if you're having issues with not being able to see or listen live on Facebook, if you go over to our YouTube, you should everything should work fine over there. Which is weird that you can't stream the sermon on subscribers. Well, with the software we're using, we can. Yeah. I guess well, since we're talking about this, hold on for a second. Um, what we're looking to do is to use the software that we have now to stream to both places at the same time. Um, most of our church family, when we look at the stats, most of our people watch on Facebook, not on YouTube just because that's the platform most people are using. But technically, YouTube works better. So we're gonna to try to send the stream to both so that if people are on Facebook and it kicks out, they'll know to go over to YouTube and be able to pick it up and eventually just look at it in YouTube. And then the goal is to have that embedded in our webpage so people can just go to our website and see the stream there. So we just had the new website go up this week. so. There was a whole big to-do list of things that we're trying to get straight to make sure it's working. We had to make sure the online giving was working first. And so we got, that looks like it went through. We had some receipts come through this afternoon. So now that that's working, the streaming is the next, you know, the next bite of the elephant we're trying. Yeah. But yeah. All right, well, before we get too far off the path here, let's pray for our prayer requests and then if there are any more questions, we can field them, okay? Let's pray. Father God, thank you again for this time together. Uh, thank you for the chance to gather freely and safely in your name. Thank you for the chance to pray to you, Father, and thank you for the promise that you listen. Uh, we want to start, Father, by lifting up the emergency prayer request that Kay is lifting up. Father, you know who she's lifting up and you know what they need. You know why she's lifting this prayer up. And so, Father, we ask that you would step into this situation and act swiftly. Um, we pray not just for a resolution to the issue, but also for emotional and spiritual healing for whatever these people are dealing with as well. And we lift up our sister Kay, too. She's worried about someone right now. Father, we thank you for being with Sister Monica when her oldest twin called. Thank you for giving her wisdom and yeah. for offering that care. Um, yeah. It's a hard thing when you have kids walking around out there. It's your heart walking around, Father. And we thank you so much for that love. And we also ask for your help because we can't take care of them without you. And so, Father, thank you for that experience. We know that you've been with Sister Monica and her children over these months. And uh, we just thank you for time after time of your faithful care. Um, Father, we're grateful. Um, we know you'll be there and we trust that you will. We're also grateful that you are and we don't want to take that for granted, Father. We don't want to just ask for help. We also want to say thank you. Father, we lift up some other unspoken prayer requests. We lift up Kay's other unspoken prayer requests and Darlene's unspoken requests. Father, we lift up Carol and Jim's family, as they are traveling, we pray for safe travels, and we thank you for grandkids. Was it grandkids or great-grandkids in the pool? Grandkids. Grandkids. For grandkids in the swimming pool and the chance to have breakfast together today. Father, we lift up Bo and his stolen wallet. We pray that you will make that way straight and that you will help address that issue, Father, that you'll make sure there's no fraud and that he gets back the things that he needs. And just be with him for the stress of that right now. Father, uh, we join lots of people in saying thank you that this um, roller coaster damage was caught before there were any injuries. Father, thank you so much that someone happened to be recording and saw that. And uh, thank you it was taken care of. Father, we lift up Tom Bell and his cancer diagnosis. We also lift up Gina's friend and her husband, as they are dealing with uh, stage four cancer as well. Uh, we also lift up the two women we are praying for um, who have cancer as well, that you would be present with them in their treatment. Father, we lift up the families of the victims in the shooting in Baltimore. 
Um, so many injured, Father, and it, it just seems like it comes every day now. And um, I just pray there would be peace, Father. Pray for peace. Um, while we're praying for Baltimore, Father, we pray for France and the riots that are happening there. Yes. We know the military is threatening to come in. Father, we lift up the situation in Ukraine. Um, we know there's some worry now about this nuclear power plant being bombed. Um, we pray for the situation in Russia as that is getting more and more dangerous with different people now trying to push for power. Father, we pray for the innocents who are caught in the middle of all this fighting. And again, we pray for peace, Father. We lift up our sister Barbara to you. We pray for her neighbors, Father. We pray that this procedure will um, help his heart to function and be strong enough to be able to have the transplant procedure. And we pray for Barbara as she seeks to minister to them. We also lift up her eyes to you, Father. We pray that um, as she's trying to schedule this new appointment, that her pressure would come up and that she would not need a further procedure and that you would protect the vision in her eye, Father. We lift up our young people, Father, and just the temptations and trials that they face with cell phones and internet access and all the things that go with that. We know that it promises good things, but it brings such a cost, Father. And we pray for wisdom for our young people and well, our old people do, for all of us, Father. It's a tricky road. It seems like a good bargain, but please help us. We lift up our brother Jim as he's preparing for a procedure this week. We know that he's had some great news from doctors lately, Father, and we pray that the streak would continue. We thank you for just helping strengthen his body ever since that valve got replaced. He's just been running all cylinders again, Father, and we thank you for that. Um, we lift up our sister Karen, Father. We thank you for making a way when that medicine was so expensive, and as she's having a change with her doctor retiring, Father, we pray that you would continue to make that way. Yes, if it's through the same solution, amen. If it's a different solution, we're not picky, Father. We just pray that you, you make a way for Karen to have access to the medicine that she needs to be healthy. Or, you know, a miracle works too. <laughs> um, whatever you choose, Father, we trust that you are there and that you will care for Karen. Thank you for our day of worship today, Father. Thank you for a chance to join at your table and celebrate communion. Thank you for the chance to have new brothers and sisters in church with us. Thank you for all the kids down the hallway, and we lift up those who are working down there. And uh, thank you for this chance to get into your word and to read more of the Gospel of John together. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. So the last couple announcements, um, as I was kind of saying, the website is different now. Our domain has changed over to a different server and a different company. So the website's going to look a little bit different. We, we didn't go too crazy or anything, but it, it, it's pretty close to what it was. Um, if you click through the giving link, it's going to take you to a different website. It's not going through Faith Life anymore. Now it's going through a company called Breeze. So you'll see that come up. So if you have any questions about that, you please talk to me or um, Vicki or David or one of the board members, and we'll do our best to track down an answer for you. We're all trying to figure out how to do this. But Vicki did a wonderful job. Just a special thanks to her. She uh, had to watch some YouTube videos to figure out how to do it, but man, she got that website whipped together. So thank God for her mind and her creativity and for David getting all the bank stuff set up because that's... Oof, that's a nightmare. But he's got a head for numbers, and so we're thankful for that too. So just keep praying as we're trying to get this streaming thing straightened out. Um, we're trying to find that balance of having something that's good and also affordable. And um, as you know, that's, that's not always a, a balance that is easy to strike. I am just looking for one name here that I can't find. No, I think we're good. Can you double check this for me? Because I'm going to be distracted looking at this. I don't have com I don't have any comments coming through right now. 
So, no, I'm just going to pull it up on my phone if you guys don't mind real quick. So, as you're looking, we are going to be studying in John chapter 14 tonight. Let me turn my sound off so you don't have to hear that. All right. It looks like we are live. Okay, hopefully between these two things I'll get comments. Um, it seems that that's another issue that comments aren't working correctly. They don't always show up in the live feed. They all populate after the feed's done, and then they all pop through. Um, yeah. Excuse me. Did you find more? I did. So I was able to get... Um, get together with Shirley last night actually on the phone and he is down in Wilmington in a rehab so I'm heading over there tomorrow morning to find him uh, it's not one I've ever been to it's called Coral Springs I've never heard of it so we're gonna put it in the GPS and have an adventure tomorrow morning and <laughs> I'm gonna keep driving till I find him <laughs> so, so pray for me because I don't know where I'm going <laughs> yeah so Thank God for that, because I'm not great with directions. I can't imagine doing visitations at strange hospitals without GPS. Yeah. So, yeah. Oh, Venus is on with us. Hello, Venus. Looks like things just woke up. Now, here's funny. I can see the chat on there, but not on there. I don't know what's happening. All right. John chapter 14. It's been a few weeks because we had... Um, Father's Day and family camp and stuff, so we were off a little bit, so I want to just catch us all up. Where we just read, we were in the middle of something really big, and honestly, this whole section, okay, from when we had the foot washing all the way through to Jesus' crucifixion, it, it's, it's all very intense. There's a lot going on, right? So um, we are still in that night, um, the night of the foot washing and the Last Supper, and this is a really intense night where Jesus has these intimate conversations with the disciples. And then as we get through to chapter 17, that's when he prays. So we are not going to be going super fast, which I think you're probably used to. But where we read, where we ended last time, we were reading um, John 14, verses 6 and 7. Would somebody be willing to read that for us as a recap? I got it. Thank you. Okay, so we ended with this very significant claim where Jesus, he's not mincing words, he's saying, when you have seen Jesus, you have seen God, okay? And so where we ended last week was kind of addressing some of the teachings that, are, that were common back then and are still a problem now. Teachings where people want to say that Jesus had good things to say, or Jesus was a holy man or a prophet, but deny his divinity. And the way we in our church believe and the way Orthodox Christians around the world believe, these are not things that you can separate. right? You can't pull out Jesus' divinity and still have a gospel message. There is no gospel message without the divinity of Jesus. Okay, So um, it's going to come up again, but the disciples, even though they have recognize Jesus as Messiah, you might remember that that title means one who's anointed, anointed by God. And that same title was used, for instance, for the judges, you know, when God would raise up a person to help save the people from a situation. And so Jesus is trying to show them that, and I want to be respectful here, he's not just a prophet. He's not just an anointed one. That when they have seen him, they have seen God. And you might be thinking, well, why is he getting so, so tough about this now? Well, he's about to be crucified. And he knows what's going to happen. He knows the disciples are going to scatter. Mm -hmm. And they need to have this. They need to have this knowledge. Um, not just in their heads, but in their hearts. What? He told them before, not to follow my 
Yeah, and as we go through the rest of this chapter, that's the big theme, right? Jesus is saying, you've already heard this, you've already seen this, right? One of the big themes in the Gospel of John are signs and wonders. Mm -hmm. And so we've gone up to this point where Jesus has performed these signs and wonders, excuse me, he's taught, and they've gotten part of the message, but they haven't made it all the way. And the big push in John is there's the group of people who have head knowledge and the group of people who have faith. So you have people like some of the Pharisees who recognize that Jesus is powerful, but they don't recognize that he's the son of God. And Jesus is trying to get people from this court over into the other court, right? To not just believe that he did something cool and, and divine, but that he is divine, that he is God. That when you've seen the son, you have seen the father. Now, I'm saying this like it's a clear thing that they should just get. Um, I don't know about you, Pastor. I studied theology for quite a while, and I still have trouble wrapping my head around this a little bit, right? The idea of the Trinity is a divine idea, and it is hard for us to kind of understand that. But here Jesus is saying this clear thing. When you have seen the Son, you have seen the Father, right? They are not the exact same thing. We know um, one of the good examples I use happened earlier in this gospel when Jesus was baptized by John the Baptist. Do you guys remember what happened at that moment of baptism? The voice from heaven and then the dove. Exactly. Perfect. And on his head. Yeah, so we had the voice from heaven. We had God the Father speaking from the cloud. We had the Holy Spirit descending in the form of a dove. And we had the Son being baptized. So you have the three parts of the Trinity that you can see all interacting with one another, right? Or like when, when God speaks um, during the transfiguration. That was just a little bit ago, too. So they are not the exact same thing, but they are the same thing. The, the, the relationship is so perfect that when you've seen one, you've seen the Godhead. So we're going to try to muddle through this as best as we can with our human minds, while we also recognize that God is infinite. And uh, our brains aren't. I've read this book, and it was a Christian book, and it talked about this little girl and her stepdaughter brother or something. That like our brain, compared to um, understanding God, is like a little puppy trying to understand what we're trying to tell them. Which, which part do the puppy do? Well, <laughs> yeah. There was a, an episode of Star Trek Voyager I watched back in the day. <laughs> Frank will appreciate this. And the captain, they had landed on a planet that was a, a early civilization, like, you know, past Stone Age, but not really science. And they were talking, and she said that explaining their whole life to these people would be like teaching algebra to a sparrow. It's just, it can't be done. And it's not, that's not a judgment. They're just not able to understand. Right. And so there are things about God that are greater. His ways are higher than our ways. Right? Look at the conversation that that Job has with God, right? There are many things about God that are too great for us to understand. And even things that people like Paul saw, or John saw, and they were told, no, you can't tell everybody because not everybody can handle this. Yeah. So, I love how everything that you're saying now, uh, combined with your sermon this morning, is just mind-boggling that we would be saying Amen. Amazing. To me, that's one of the most beautiful things of Scripture, is the more time you spend in it, the more that you see that it is one story. Yeah. And I don't mean each testament. I mean cover to cover. It's yeah. one story. And the more you learn, the more you memorize, the more you dig, the more you see that it's all the same story. And it's that we're loved. We're loved. Amen. All right. Yeah. There's some tricky metaphysics there, and I'm not going to pretend to be an expert. Um, I, I'm not entirely sure how the spirit fits in here, but 
We know that Jesus is seen in his risen body, right? So we can probably safely assume that we will see Jesus in his physical form. And that our new bodies will be like to his. We're also told that there will be no need for a son because God himself will be our life. And so some people think that the presence of God the Father in eternity is light. Um, But again, this is deeper than... This is deeper than I think a lot of us can grasp. I kind of think of of the spirit as the mobile God. Yeah. Yeah. We have to be careful. Um, I don't know how much we want to get into this, but I'm gonna I'm gonna dip my toe in the waters here. Um, A lot of our teachings about God, a lot of the things that are in our articles of faith, they're not just there to teach us what the Bible says. They're also there to present biblical arguments against heretical movements. And so there is one heretical um, movement about Jesus. It's called modality or modalism. And it basically says that really there's just one God. You're just seeing him in three different ways. So if I were to talk about you in using the argument of modality, I would say there's Darlene, the pantry volunteer. There's Darlene, my friend in church. And there's Darlene, the nurse. And Maybe some people know you as the nurse, and some people know you as the pantry lady, and some people know you as the church lady, but it's really just Darlene. Right. Where that falls apart is, if, that, if that's really how it was, you, Darlene the nurse can't interact with Darlene the pantry lady, because it's really just one Darlene. Right. So there's, there's something deeper here than right. that. Yeah, because we do see times where the different parts of the Trinity interact with one another. Even in Genesis 1, let us create. Right? The Trinity's talking to itself. Yeah. I don't even know if itself is the right pronoun there. but <laughs> right. So there's depth here that, that's hard to grasp. The key thing that Jesus is trying to get across here in John 14 is that he is divine. And that when you have seen him, you're not seeing a prophet. You're not seeing a messenger. You're not seeing an angel. You're not seeing a human being that was filled with the spirit of God. You're seeing God incarnate. You're seeing God. So when you've seen the Son, you have seen the Father. Okay? All right. Man, we're we're probably not going to get real far tonight at this rate. But (laughs) that's good, though. And and I hope, I think I get this point across. When you have questions, I always want to talk about them. Because this is how we figure these things out. By doing it together. Even the church councils, like when they came up with the creeds, right? It was a bunch of people together praying and studying and talking and then praying some more, and, right? And, and that's what we're doing. We're, we're, when we're together, we're greater than we are when we're apart. Now, the, the part of that that some people get frustrated with is that's not a fast process, right? This kind of growth and this, trying for this kind of depth, it doesn't happen fast. So if we're going to go through the Bible... And we're going to take time to talk about the Trinity. It's going to take time. Yeah. Okay, so um, let's jump back in um, where Philip now uh, decides he's going to pipe in. Can somebody please read John chapter 14, verses 8 through 11? Thank you. Philip said, Lord, show us the Father, and we will be satisfied. Jesus replied, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and yet you still don't know who I am? (laughs) Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. So why are you asking me to show him to you? Don't you believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words I speak are not my own, but my Father's who lives in me. Does his work through me. Just believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. Or at least believe because of the work you have seen me done in do. Thank you, brother. So, in verse 7 that we read a few minutes ago, Jesus said, if you had really known me. And now he's saying, you still don't know who I am. What's the problem that Jesus is scraping at here? They're not picking up what he's putting down. Yeah. Yeah. So let's get into that, right? 
when we read Jesus here, in a way, sometimes the Gospels are like a text message, right? When you have writing and text, sometimes it's hard to know what the tone is, right? And so I wonder sometimes, when, when Jesus says, have I been with you all this time, Philip, and yet you still don't know who I am, is he trying to smack him upside the head? Or is he kind of thoughtfully considering and speaking back what Philip has just said, yeah. right? Given the character of Jesus, I lean towards the second one, like Darlene was saying. Um, I don't know that he's frustrated. I think that Jesus understands that the time is come, right? He's had years now, about three years, where he's been telling them, the time has not yet come, the time has not yet come, and then we get to the time is near, the time is near, and now we're at the time is now. And yet, they're not ready for the final exam. Mm -hmm. Now, we want to give them a little bit of credit here, right? The Pentecost has not happened yet. They have not been filled with the Holy Spirit. They have not seen the resurrected Jesus yet, okay? So we've got a lot of the story that they don't have yet at this point. So we want to make sure we give them a little bit of a slide on this one. But we see why Jesus really wants them to understand what's happening. Um, maybe, the, I try to figure out, like, what is Jesus really trying to say here? He says, um, verse 11, he's like, just believe that I am the Father, I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. Or at least believe because of the work you've seen me do. Why do you think he would put those two things together at the end? Only people of God can do this sort of thing, like raising the dead and turning the water to wine and stuff like that. I mean, that doesn't come from the devil. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. What Jesus says and what he does, he does because the Father deems it proper for him to say and teach and do the things he does. Right, yeah. So he's saying if... If your time with me, if our time together in relationship, and if my words are not enough, at least the signs should be enough to point you in that direction. Yeah. yeah. Even if you, you didn't learn the teaching, you, you saw Lazarus hop out of that tomb wrapped in coat, mm -hmm. right? Like, you saw these things. Yeah. And the son of the widow of Nain. Yeah. yeah. So, so it wasn't a one-time deal. Right. And the daughter of Jairus. Right. Yeah. So this is and those are just the ones that we know because there are a bunch of times where it says, and he healed everybody else. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. So I'm sure there's a lot more here. That, and of course, the end of John hints at that, that there's a lot more. That's John the Baptist. Yeah. Yeah. That's John the Baptist. John the Baptist. That's a different one. That's a centurion. He built a for us. You're right. You're right. I'm mixing up my Romans. That's okay. Thank you, Pastor. But sometimes, you guys ever cook with your tasty pillow? You know what the tasty pillow is? You ever cook stew and you, and you take your herbs and you put them in a little bit of cheesecloth and tie it up and throw it in so you can put the big pieces of herbs in there? Yeah. yeah. No? Anybody here cook with a bay leaf? Yeah. yeah. You know, it's lucky if you get the bay leaf on your plate. When you throw the bay leaf in, is the pot instantly seasoned? No, it takes time. Yeah. So this is something that we have to recognize, that Jesus is working within human limitations. And the physical world is bound by time. The human mind is bound by its limitations of process, of understanding, of trusting. And that these, this kind of growth, really, there's, there's no shortcut. Everybody we see in the Bible, every human we see in the Bible, it takes time, right? That's why he's been with them for three years. And even now, well, all right, well, you popped my bubble there, but you're right. There are some cases where he spoke to her and that sign was enough for her. Yeah, that sign was enough. Um, but these guys, they're just, they got, they're inside their heads, you know? Do we ever get that way? Never. Pretty much my MO, right? 
when things bad happen to us, when, you know, I, I try not to get too graphic here, but there are some bad things that happen in this world, right? Um, bad things happen to innocent people, to children. And it can be very hard for us to see those things and yet still recognize that the things that God says are true. And Jesus knows that these men love him deeply and they are about to watch him die. And it is going to rock them to their foundation. And so I think he's trying to get them to understand that he has not been teaching them a series of lessons. He's been giving them one message over and over and over again. And it's not really going to click for them until after the resurrection, with a couple exceptions. I think Charlene's right to point out the woman at the well. I think John, the disciple John, he's the one disciple who doesn't run away, and he's at the foot of the cross with Mary. I think he probably gets as close as any of the disciples do to understanding. But again, it's not until they encounter the resurrected Jesus that this all makes sense. And even then, they're still having a little bit of trouble. Yeah. So, one of my key takeaways... Yeah, they didn't know. They didn't know. But one of the beautiful things here is that Jesus is so very patient with them. It's the night he's going to be arrested. And yet, he's, they're just coming at him with, you know, Peter, they just had the whole foot washing thing. Like, no, Jesus, you're not going to wash my feet. He's like, Peter, I'm your master. I told you to wash my feet. I told you I got to do this. He's like, hey, we're going to do that. Wash my whole body. I'm just like, Peter, please listen to me. Didn't you hear when God spoke at the transfiguration? This is my son. Listen to him. Right? Um, it just, we struggle. And yet God loves us. One, one of my favorite Psalms, I have a few, but one of them is Psalm 103. It's the one, the part we often quote is where it says that when God forgives our sins, he removes them as far from us as the east is from the west. Amen. But if you keep going just a little bit, it says that the reason he does that is because he knows we are little more than dust. Right. right? He knows we're a bunch of ninnies. He knows our limitations, right? He's not an Olympic judge trying to deduct tenths of a point because you didn't land on the mat right. <laughs> He's more like a loving parent trying to teach a child how to ride a bike. He knows we're going to fall off that bike, like I said this morning. He knows we're going to fall. He knows we're going to struggle. And yet he is committed to be there with us through the struggle to help us because he wants us to get through to the other side, right? If you, get, if you understand anything about Jesus, you're going to understand he's not looking for reasons to send people to hell. He's looking for excuses to bring people into the wedding feast, right? Go out and get anybody you find. Grab people off the street and bring them in. We got room at the table, right? And that's what he's doing here. He's going out of his way to be sensitive and loving and help them. That's why when they were doomed. Yeah, it is. Now, let's flip that around on us, all right? We've we've ragged on Philip and Peter a little bit. Let's let's turn the camera towards ourselves. We read these things in the gospel, right? We know more of the story than they did at that time. I think most of us, I, I know everybody in this room well enough to know you've all encountered God in some way in your life, in a supernatural, powerful way. Do we always trust that Jesus is Lord? There's lots of questions, so that doesn't encourage me. Yeah. So we also struggle with that complete surrender and that constant trust. There are times that that doubt creeps in. Right? In the middle of, I don't think it's an, an accident that Jesus was arrested in the middle of the night. In that dark middle part of the night, that's the hardest part, right? You know, maybe, maybe you're like me and you have trouble with sleep sometimes. Those dark parts of the night. Those still watches, they're hard. And yet he's with us. He's with us. What we're about to read, and I'm spoilers here, but it's okay. He's saying that he's going to be leaving, but he doesn't, he's not going to leave us as orphans. He's going to leave another advocate. So he's an advocate, and he's leaving another advocate for us. It's all about his tender love for us. 
He's trying to get into their head. You are not weak and broken children who don't know the truth. You've encountered God. You've touched God. You've broken bread with God. And that's where he goes in the next part, verses 12 to 14. Jesus says, I tell you the truth. Or if you're a, a King James fan, verily, verily, I say unto thee. When Jesus says, I tell you the truth, what's it, what, are we, what should go up on your antenna? Pay attention. Pay attention. This is a big deal. I tell you the truth. Anyone who believes in me will do the same works I have done and even greater works because I am going to be with the Father. You can ask for anything in my name and I will do it so that the Son can bring glory to the Father. Yes, ask me for anything in my name and I will do it. And verse 13 says, in order that, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. There's the Trinity again. Yeah. And Jesus has talked about this, right? That everything he has done has been to bring glory to God. Mm -hmm. And God, in turn, brings glory to the Son. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This mutual love and glorification to be lifted up. Yeah. Jesus, and this is going to, this we're going to hit our climax in chapter 17. But Jesus is saying that the relationship he has with God and the divine power that he has access to is the same relationship we're supposed to have with God and the same divine power we're supposed to have access to, right? We are not left powerless to be devoured by the enemy. We're children of the king. Blood-blood children of the king. Amen. Yeah. And we got to live like it, you know? You don't need to be scared of Satan. Yeah, he's going to try to trip you up, and he's going to make your car leak, and he's going to make your chest hurt, and whatever, right? He's going to do these things, but pfft, he's got a loud roar, but he's toothless. Because Jesus reigns, right? No demon can touch you. Satan can't take your soul. What's he going to do? Kill you and send you to heaven? Oh, no. I'm in heaven, right? I'm serious. The only thing he can do is touch your body. And your body's broken and going to die anyway. Right? Yes. We've got a warranty, and we know the replacement's going to be way better than this model. Right? We've got to understand this. We don't need to use the powers of this world to try to defend ourselves against evil. Right? AR-15s and Twitter followers are not going to save your soul. They don't matter. What was that last one? Guns. They're not going to save your soul. Armies will not protect you. got to understand this. There's only one way. They can't save your soul. Man, sin can't beat you. Paul said, we died to sin. Don't, you don't keep going back to that. You know, Proverbs says we're like a dog going back to our vomit, right? Yeah, don't, it's nasty, but that's what we do, right? I sinned and it killed me and I found Jesus. Why would I ever go back to that? And yet so often we do. Because it's what we know, because it's comfortable, because we're tempted. I don't know. But we have faith that the world is. That's not who we're called to be. That's the way the world is. But that's not the way we're called to be. Did you want to add something, Pastor? Yeah, in Hebrews it says that let us not go back to the, uh, the, the simple things of the faith, like baptisms and forgiveness of sins, but by all means, let us go forward. Yeah, you're you're ready for me. Yeah, yes. get off that formula. We got steak. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Jesus knows what they're about to face. He knows that when they're sitting in the dark after he's been arrested, when they're seeing him bleed on that cross, they're going to need something to hold on to. And he's giving them this promise. And it's not a new promise. That's what he's trying to tell them. This isn't a last-minute plan B. This has been his plan all along to show them that he is God and that the most the world can do is kill his body. And you know what's going to happen? He's going to rise up again. And that same promise is made for us. We don't need to be afraid. And when I look around in our world, I see so often Christians who are aligning ourselves with evil 
because we think we need to do it to get the job done. That we need to align ourselves with the powers of this world in order to build the church or protect the church. And that's a lie. Read Revelation. The powers of this world, Babylon, empire, that is Satan's domain. That is not ours. Walk away from that. That way lies death. Jesus is our king. Read ahead. Read the final battles. Right? First battle. Jesus on the white horse. Sword coming out of his mouth. Right? Army of God. You know, all the people of God with Jesus and the armies of the enemy over there. And we, we save Jesus, right? He, need, he needs me to jump up and save him, right? No. Jesus wipes it out. Second final battle. The very final, final battle, right? You know, the river's dried up. The armies of of men have come across and Satan's there out of the pit and all, right? And you know what happens? God. You're done. We don't have to do anything. That's not our place. It's not our place. We are servants of the king. And it's his job to protect us. It's not our job to protect ourselves. We can't do it. It's not possible. And when we try, we just mess things up. Because then we're just looking at ourselves and we're not worrying about everybody else. All we need to do is the vine. Yeah. The vine and the branches. I think about St. Francis. You know, there was a, he got a little mixed up at first. When God first told him to build the church, he thought he was supposed to build the church. Right? So he's, he's, you know, got laying some bricks. That's not quite what God meant. But St. Francis, uh, he was a lover of the poor and the sick and of nature. And there are stories upon stories of Francis interacting with lepers. And you know what he would do when he would meet a leper? Touch them. He would touch them. He'd kiss them. Who would touch a leper? Who? You know why? He's not afraid of that disease. It can't, it can't hurt his soul. That's who we need to be. Not building castles with gun turrets and flamethrowers, not tearing people down in the media. It doesn't solve anything. We're called to hug lepers, right? To have appointments with a woman at the well and tell her she's loved. Yeah, you know what I mean, though. There's deeper things. And it changes from age to age. For a long while, it was AIDS, right? Look what happened during COVID. I still have people who won't shake my hand. But anyway, I know we kind of went from a Bible study to a sermon here, but sometimes that happens. This is what Jesus is trying to tell his disciples, right? You are going to face trials and troubles, and the enemy is going to try to break you. But you have an advocate greater, and you are washed by the blood of the Lamb. Like Paul says in Romans chapter 8, right? He says, who can condemn us? No one. No one. And nothing can separate you from God's love revealed to you in Christ Jesus. Nothing. And he lists all kinds of things. He lists the powers of heaven and hell and, and armies and people and also our fears for today and our worries for tomorrow. Paul says none of these things can separate you from Christ's love. So should we worry about any of those things? No. Do we need to spend time and energy fighting against those things? No. no. In a little bit, of course, we didn't get there tonight, but Jesus says, if you love me, obey my commands. All right? So we'll get to that more next week. But when Jesus says, if you love me, obey my commands, what do you think he means? <laughs> okay, just what he says. It's, he's pretty blunt, right? If you love me, do what I say. Okay. Good. We're good. We're together on this. What did he command? Love God, love people. Yeah. And we can just say love. He doesn't need us to cut the ear off a slave. He doesn't need us to do that. Right? He doesn't need us to do that. So, yeah. Listen, as a recipient of that wooden spoon, I will testify that Jesus doesn't need you to do that. <laughs> I, I, I needed it, though. I really did. Speaking of which, my mom's online. Hi, Mom. <laughs> did you hear my Millbilly joke this morning? I don't know. My grandma. It wasn't my mom. It was my grandma. And then I got in trouble for breaking the spoon. Yeah. 
Anyway, I just want you to hear this hope, right? I want you to hear this hope. So um, let me try to, I don't know if I can steer the ship back at the port or not. Jesus says, you will do greater works than I have done. Because, because why? Verse 12. Yeah. But I don't want him to go to the Father. I want him to stay with me. You'll have the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit can be everywhere at one time. Yeah. Sometimes our momentary comfort is not God's plan. Sometimes for God's plan to be carried out, we need to sacrifice a little bit. I'm sure if the disciples had their choice, they would have loved to just sit on that beach and eat fish with Jesus every day and have it be no different ever. But if they had done that, where would we be? Lost. Lost. So we've got our retirement plan, right? We've got eternity. But for now in this life, We've got to step up. Now, is Jesus saying, look, man, you can pray and you will fly and you'll have laser beam eyes. And is, like, are we talking like superhero stuff here, like Incredible Hulk? No. When he says, if you ask for anything in my name, I'll do it. But it should be asking what you want. You know, guided by the Spirit. Yeah. Right, because what's the purpose of this? Is this so that we can be awesome? No. no. We can show that we please Jesus. To bring glory to the Father. They will see our good works and give glory to the Father, your Father in heaven. Amen. Amen. So and we're saved for good works. Amen. To live in that. Amen. To live by that. And nothing more. So remember when Jesus was tempted by Satan in the wilderness? And the devil tried to get him to do all this stuff? Use your power for you, right? Yeah. We have to be careful not to fall into that temptation here. We're not to use God like a genie. That's not our place. Exactly. Our, our place is to pray for God's glory to be done. But, we, but our lives will be in tune with that. We will want what is right. Yeah. But it won't be like, this is what I want, Lord. I know what I want. But I got to do what he wants. But, you know, what so let's, let's give a good example. Yeah. If we jump into Acts chapter 6. There's a story of a person whose life, he says he's full of God's spirit. And his name is Stephen. Right? And Stephen got a job. He got assigned to work in the food pantry. Right? That's a job we all like. But do you know what happened to Stephen? He got arrested. And after he got arrested, he spoke his testimony. One of the most beautiful testimonies that have ever been spoken. And he went from Moses to Jesus and connected all the dots. And they decided they were going to kill him for it. And while they were stoning him, do you know what Stephen did? He prayed for the people. Just like Jesus did. Now, on the one hand, as the leader of a food pantry, was Stephen a knockout all-star? Eh, they kind of, he kind of died right away, right? But his death and his testimony have brought glory to God over centuries. Amongst millions of people, hundreds of millions of people. Do you think Stephen regrets what happened? No. No. He gave his life to God, and his life was used in a way that brought glory to the Father and brought lost children back to God. Isn't that what we should all be doing? Now, look at the disciples. James, not, not, the, not the brother of Jesus, but James the disciple. He gets killed right away. He barely gets a chance to, to do any preaching or teaching, right? Do you think he regretted his time with Jesus? No. no. John, he gets to live longer than all the other disciples. And if our history's right, he's the only disciple that dies a natural death. Do you think it was easy for him to go through all those years and watch his brothers be murdered? No, but you know why he did it? For the glory of God. The Gospel of John is one of the last Gospels to be written because John lived longer than anybody else. Because he's the only one they didn't murder. They tried yeah. multiple times. Yeah. But he got the perspective to put all this together in a way that is different than the other four Gospels. 
Do you think he regrets giving his life to God? So when we give our lives to God, we don't know what that's going to entail. It might be a life that's longer than any of your peers, like John. It might be a death like Stephen. For most of us, it's going to be somewhere in between, and it's going to involve some hard work and some sacrifice, probably some arthritis and some headaches, <laughs> right? Like yeah. But that's who we're called to be, to be servants of our king. When Jesus says, if you love me, obey my commands. You're my followers if you obey my commands. This is what he means. It doesn't mean putting ourselves first. Now, we also are not supposed to make ourselves martyrs, right? God can get the work done. So, you know, that doesn't mean we make it all about us and have a Messiah complex either. We can't let the pendulum swing too far. Yes, please. During the era of martyrdoms, the church had to come up with rules on which martyrs are really martyrs. And they said you had to run away and try to get away. And still be, still be faithful to God, but try to get away. Don't put yourself out there to be martyred. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's it too, right? Yeah. When, when Paul's on trial, when he's before Felix, he's respectful. Right? Yeah. So, it's all these things together. Um, I've been quoting it, and so I'm just going to, verse 15 is the verse I keep quoting. If you love me, obey my commandments. Now, we're not going to get through all this tonight. I would like to read this section, and we'll have some time to stew on it, okay? Verses, could somebody please, could please read uh, chapter 14, verses 15 through 21? Thank you. If you love me, obey my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate who will never leave you. He is the Holy Spirit who leads into all truth. Mm. The world cannot receive him because it isn't looking for him and doesn't recognize him. But you know him because he lives with you now and later will be in you. No, I will not abandon you as orphans. I will come to you. Soon the world will no longer see me, but you will see me since I live also will live. Mm. When I am raised to life again, you will know that I am in the Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. Mm. Those who accept my commandments and obey them are the ones who love me. And because they love me, my Father will love them, and I will love them and re reveal myself to each of them. Amen. Ready. I know, so that's Amen. why it's going to take, we can't get, we only have five minutes left, so we can't get through all this, but I, I do want to touch on this. If you love me, obey my commandments. Is this something that we can do of our own wisdom and our own strength? No. No, because we're a bunch of ninnies, right? <laughs> Left to our own devices, we're like Adam and Eve, right? Mm -hmm. But we've got an advocate and we've got a spirit, right? Now, there are some conditional statements here, like if-then statements, right? If you love me, I will ask the Father and he will give you the spirit, right? The world cannot receive him because it's not looking for him. The world cannot receive him because it doesn't recognize him. You know him because he lives with you now and later will be in you. This is a special relationship here, right? Who does God desire this kind of relationship with? Us, everyone. Us, everyone. Yeah, all of us. But not everyone is going to do this. Not everyone is going to accept this. And so there are going to be a lot of the people in the world who have blinders on. Or to use the Old Testament phrase, they have eyes and do not see and ears and do not hear. Right? Because they choose not to. Right. But if we choose, God will show you. Now, he doesn't show us to us all at once because our heads would explode. Right? Yeah, but... <laughs> Exactly, exactly. So just like Moses starts out with that conversation in the desert, he doesn't start out in Pharaoh's palace, right? Mm -hmm. But this is God's desire to have this relationship with you. 
We're going to get into this relationship more next week, but I just wanted to bring this in. I think in a way, you, the people could have seen Jesus' ascension as a bad thing because we have Jesus and now Jesus is going. But Jesus is saying there's something greater that's coming. And because of where you and I were born in history, you know what that means? We're on the receiving end of that. We're in the last age. We live after the resurrection and we live after Pentecost. We live in a beautiful time in history. Now, the enemy is kicking and screaming because he knows his time is running short. Look around the world, right? Look at Ukraine, look at France, look at Baltimore, right? The enemy's kicking and screaming. But man, look at our blessing to not just have the Holy Spirit with us, but have the Holy Spirit in us. That's a taste of heaven right there. And we get to have it right now. Amen. And it's a little bit different for each of us because we're all a little bit different. I share some of your heart there, right? But this is, this is it. This is who we're called to be. You could say, man, well, why does God want you to give up all that fun stuff? And why does God want you to do all that hard stuff? And if you're asking those questions, you don't understand God. God is saying, come. And we can have perfect relationship. And you can have peace that's beyond human understanding. And you can be forgiven and be loved. And be a part of a family. And not only do we get to be a part of it, we get free passes to bring other people in. Amen? Amen. 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 Uh, that is Pastor Jim. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, yeah. I recognize those calves anywhere. Yeah, it's supposed to be there. <laughs> anyway. We're going to get back into this next Sunday. Um, I'm going to ask you, please read ahead. Please read John chapter 14 again, at least. And if you have time, read through to chapter 17 through the end of the prayer. Because reading that prayer, the way Jesus prays for us, is really going to help you understand what he's trying to teach here. Okay? Mm -hmm. This is all meant to go together. It's just too much for us to eat at once, so we've got to break it up. But remember, this is all one conversation. Mm -hmm. It's taken us months to get through one evening of conversation. That's how important this is. All right. Well, why don't we close in prayer? Pastor, would you mind closing us in prayer, please? Sure. Thank you. Let's pray together. Gracious God, we thank you for this night to look at your word, to hear your word, to have it expressed to us in ways we can understand. And we are so amazed at your grace that is amazing to us. Thank your you. grace that continues to reach to us in, in our world, where mm. we live, and how we live. Mm. And your spirit is so kind to us and lives within us and guides us the way we should go. Help us, God, to love you more, to not only do your commandments, but to witness and share the <coughs> love of God with others, that they too may come to know this wonderful God that we have in our hearts. And we will give you the praise and the glory to your name. And it's for Jesus' sake, who gave his life for us, that we pray. And all of God's people say, Amen. 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 All right. Thank you all very much. Good night, Venus. Good night, Mom. And um, you got to you gotta talk to your mom, right? Isn't, this is kind of cool, right? I mean, I know we rag on the internet a little bit. But I just got to say hi to my mom. So, hi, Mom. All right. So Venus said amen everybody. and good night. And, uh, Showing everybody the picture. Oh, yeah, I didn't show everybody the picture. Carol made a new picture for us to hang in the foyer. It's Jesus knocking on the door. Let me get a little closer to the camera so the camera can see. Took a lot. She, she's been working on this for, yeah. since the yard sale, right? Yeah. You started right after the yard sale, right? Yeah. Yeah, for a couple months. The internet. <laughs> but we're going to hang this out here in the lobby. And uh, if anybody else wants to make artwork for us to hang up, 
We got lots of walls. Good night, everybody online.